Cool guys, I think we're live. Um, welcome to the first Yoko Meets of 2021. So we're super excited today to have a really special event around social media and how small businesses can use social media in order to start their businesses and grow their businesses, right? So we wanna try and cover three platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook today. And these platforms, I think, have become like the backbone of a lot of small businesses that have like used them in order to grow what they're trying to do. So we have a lot of um, really special guests, first of all, but also a lot of other features, right? So this is Crowdcast. If this is the first time you've been here, it has a lot of really cool features that you guys can use to make this an even better event, right? So usually, and I mean like a year ago um, almost, we, we used to do these in a room and everyone would contribute and you'd have energy, right? Like that's the biggest thing. And being at home, I feel like that energy is even more important, right? So that energy needs to come through through the comment section. So we use that comment section constantly, right? So if you wanna use that comment section in order to engage, that's a really, really great thing. So the first thing that we wanna do today, right? Introduce yourself, right? So your name, your business's name, what you do, and a link, one link, right? Just those three things. So who are you? Um, what is your business and what you do, and then um, a link. But, oh, that's four things. But yeah, introduce yourself so that, you know, those connections can start forming. Like, that's the, that's the most important thing about your Meets is making connections that actually add value, right? So if people can connect in that comment section in order to add value to each other, this event is way more successful. And then, second thing. We have a really amazing competition that's running today, right? And this competition is really about making sure that the impact of this event doesn't stop here. It is amplified across, you know, the country or just the Twitterverse or Facebook. I don't know if Facebook has a universe, but you, you understand what I mean. But um, go on to Twitter, go on to Facebook, share the learnings that you have from today, right? So share the things that you are doing currently in your business in order to start or grow your business. Share the things that you would want to do if you had, you know, the prize that we're giving away today. So today we're giving away um, a, a cash prize, two cash prizes for people that share the things that they want to do and the things that they could do or the things that they think other businesses should be doing. So if you share a really amazing insight and like a lot of people really like learn from it and like there's value added to them, we want to give away two cash prizes of 5,000 Rand each, right? So I can already see like the comments start to go. Another thing, we have polls running, right? So if you click right at the bottom of your screen, right before people, there's polls and it says, so the first one, how are you feeling? The biggest reason why we ask this is because we want founders and entrepreneurs and small businesses and creators and people to connect, right? And it's important that you just like share how you're feeling today. So I'll post this, I'm really like, I'm good. Like this is the thing I really love to do. So I'm always like really happy to do it. So I'm okay um, is a really great answer. But also if you're not okay, you can be honest about that. And I think this can be a really great place to meet people that can help you on your journey and like make it way, way better as well. The second poll, is this your first time attending Yoko Meets? So I'm gonna tell you guys, like today is one of the biggest Yoko Meets we've ever had, right? It is the one of the biggest, which is like incredible. And because of like COVID and having to go remote and trying out different platforms, we've been able to open up Yoko Meets from like just a local event to now like being able to cover the entire country. So it would be amazing to hear from you if this is the first time you've been here. Um, if if not as well, if you're just returning and like that's amazing as well. And yeah, cool. And then um, which social media channel do you use in your business? So this is a big one and it's really, really important for us to understand how much more value we can add to you, whether it's through our blog or different resources that we put out so that you can be able to use those things. So please answer that one as well. I can already see like a bunch of votes already coming through. Cool, and I see that comment section is buzzing already, which is really, really great. Um, some amazing intros here. So um, I'm gonna do my intro. While I do that, please add yours. So again, I'm a shooting you. And I run, so my side hustle, I'm gonna put my side hustle. I run a podcast network. And this is the link. 
Oh, I wish I typed faster, guys. Cool. So put it all in one text, guys, because that's the only way we're going to be able to manage these things, right? Cool. I've done my intro. Um, our, our speakers are also going to do their intros because I think that's super important to get their perspective. And like, you can also connect with them past this event as well. So cool. So today we have three guests. And we're going to speak specifically about each platform first, right? So we're going to have the first guest, second guest, third guest. And then we're going to do a Q&A. If you want to ask really important questions, you hope that one of our panelists can actually answer, please use the ask a question section right at the bottom. It's right next to the polls. So you ask a question, and then we'll be able to get to those at the end. If you put your question in the comment section, unfortunately, it can get sort of lost up there as well. So cool. We're going to get started. If you are on Facebook or you're on YouTube, we do have an amazing team that's actually looking out for those questions as well. So please ask your question on the comment section in the live chat so that we can get to those um, at a later stage as well. Cool, guys. So we're going to get started with our first guest. And I'm super, super excited because I think um, a lot of us are going to learn a lot of things today. Um, here, seeing all these comments is amazing, just by the way. Zugo, I see TK over there, Jackie, Keke. Really, really amazing intros, guys. So cool. We're going to get our first guest onto the screen so we can get started, guys. Cool. Hey, Lelo, how you doing? Hi. I'm good. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing really, really well. Um, so I'm I've known doing you well. For, I've known you for like a while. And like um, everyone knows you for doing other stuff. But like, can you speak about what you do specifically around Twitter um, in your day job? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am a social media manager. I work for an agency in Santon, and we do work on some really big brands, which is uh, scary, but it's exciting. Uh, it's very challenging as well. And yeah, you know, every day has its, you know, multitudes of going through whatever it may be, just to yeah. um, uh, impress client and, you know, to get the work done and at the end of the day, we want to sell products. That's true. Yeah, that's that's what I do. How does a how does a small business get started on Twitter? You know, like it can be a bit of a daunting place because you know you can't you can some, sort of feel very like overwhelmed. But how do you get started? How do you build that initial audience on your Twitter page as a small business? So I will speak for myself because I do consider myself a small business. Um, being a content creator, being a DJ, being, you know, a writer as well. So there are many things that I do do outside of my actual job. And for me, I think that engaging with your audience, well, almost every single day, you don't have to be uh, there every single day, but I think that it is super important for you to engage with your audience. And um, that might be on anything. It might be, um, you know, getting into different topics that might, you might be interested in. Don't spam people. People don't want to see that. You get unfollowed very quickly. Um, yeah, just like always be interesting. Um, and you just always got to stay on the pulse, learning what's on the ground, um, knowing what to say and when to say it at the right time as well. And I think those things are like super important for you to actually um, gain an audience and to gauge traction and to get a conversation started. Because that's what Twitter is. It's it's conversation, you know, at the end of the day, you want to talk to other people. You don't want to, you know, um, oversell and, you know, seem like, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Um, so that's, that's what I can give. Yeah. Um, and like, how do you choose which conversations to join into, right? I think Twitter is like very intimidating as Ian just said, Lian, um, I hope I said your name right. She said that like um, it's very intimidating. And what do you think, um, you know, how do you start to navigate which conversations to join, which ones not to, because you are still talking as a business and not necessarily as a person. So how do you sort of navigate those things? I would say that whatever your business uh, niche is or whatever your market is, I think it's very important to tap into those uh, 
you know, conversations. And I'll give you an example. If you're running an online magazine, for example, and you're talking to um, entertainment, you know, I think it's very important for you to uh, keep on the pulse on what's happening in terms of like those conversational um, uh, topics involving pop culture or music or, um, you know, I think that's what it, it it is. And also what is also important, I've also learned this recently over a few years, is building a list on Twitter so that you can have your own sort of like timeline and um, putting on people who are uh, like-minded so that you can retweet, you can like, you can, you know, follow them, get more followers from that. Um, and just like, you know, having conversations with them as well. Um, and I think that's uh, part of like the important tools of Twitter. Yeah. So Twitter's sort of like grown into a, this like really complex uh, platform, right? So now there's like, you can tweet, you can um, fleet, you can um, use voice, you can use your video, you can, um, there's newsletters now as well. Like, what would you say is the top, like two of those features that um, small businesses should be using? And also, um, how do you start to get creative around the content that you're making, even though you're speaking as a business? For me, I would say, um, always be on the timeline. I think that's a given. You always have to be on the timeline. Like people have to see what you're doing all the time. You have to be visible. And uh, in terms of like the tools that uh, Twitter has now introduced, I think fleets is super important. Um, I think people are in the business of watching stories. I think we've become so conditioned into seeing what people are doing. And I think there's a lot of like creative ways you can do that, um, whether it's, uh, you know, getting into, um, you know, building different like filters and, um, you know, graphic design or artwork or any type of stuff and then putting it onto fleets, like let, let it have sound, um, just make it seem fun and engaging. And, you know, because uh, most of the time people won't even see your tweets. Uh, but if they are scrolling on your fleets, you know, they're going to probably see it. They're going to probably want to DM you about, you know, a certain price. Um, where can I get this? Or where can I go? Or like, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. And how do you balance, um, you know, trying to tell your story as a brand and just like, hey, guys, we are cool. We are doing this amazing thing. You know, that versus, um, where you're actually trying to convert. Do you think of Twitter as a platform for conversion or brand awareness, but also how do you um, best, what are the best practices for doing either of them? You know, I think it's, I think it's pretty difficult to, to say because um, each business might have its, you know, unique, unique way of doing things. And I think it's important for everyone to find what their balance is. Are you more concerned with, you know, finding leads and converting people into, you know, um, buying your product or your service or whatever it might be? Or are you more concerned with, um, you know, brand awareness, people knowing what your brand is um, and uh, being attracted to it from a, a personality standpoint? um so that they can easily buy into it and um yeah i think i think it's you just have to find your own balance um whatever that may be yeah um i know you do a lot of work you know with agencies and then large brands but um have you had experience like working with smaller businesses obviously like one of you one of them being your own right and like the events properties that you run as well what are the challenges um, that small businesses really face in like getting started on Twitter? And like, what do you think they can do to start to try and like navigate it? I'm just seeing like, everyone's saying the same thing, which is like, um, it's very intimidating. It's very intimidating. Like after you get over that, like what do you think people should be doing? People just need to get in there. You just need to get in there. You need to start tweeting. You need to start following people. There's no, there's never going to be a right time to do anything. Um, I remember when I started running the Vogue Nights Josie page, um, you know, obviously I, I started following people from my own personal page as well, but like it started building its own sort of like audience um, as well. And what that basically meant for me is that I had to follow a new set of people. I had to um, 
basically run it as a separate account from what I would personally do. And, you know, it's establishing your own uh, brand tone, your own voice, um, and making sure that all of those things feed into what you think your business might be and how it's going to look like and how it's going to live in social and how it's going to speak to people as well. And yeah, just don't be afraid. Just get in there, get, get following, get to following, um, look up the hashtags that are trending in South Africa, see what's happening. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it, that's, it's about getting a conversation started, no matter how you may do it. I don't, I don't think there's an easy way to, um, plug into Twitter. You know, you just got to just like grow with it. Cool. Thank you so much. Leila. So, um, we're going to catch up with you during the Q and a, thank you so much. I certainly learned a lot. Thank you so much. Um, cool guys. I see there's a conversation building now, like really good conversation. What I need you to do now. Right. So the first one was a really like, I need to get out my information. You guys want to get out your information. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is where you can, you know, uh, find the business that we're running. Now I need you to do something else. Right. So, I need you to contribute to someone else's growth. Share one tool that has helped you the most in getting started with social media. It could be something like Canva, for example, which we did like an entire thread on on Twitter, like um, different resources that you could be using. But something like Canva, where you know you can create content and you can do all these amazing things for your brand. What is one tool that has helped you? Please share the name of that um, that specific app. Just that so that everyone knows what it is, but also try and do a, just a short description. I see Canva already like just blowing up everywhere, guys. So just explain a little bit, right? So Canva, you can create content, has really great templates, that's it. I need you guys name and then just a short, like just a short thing that says what it is. Cool, so we're gonna move on to our second guest. Really excited to talk about the next platform. So it was really, really, like interesting to see how intimidated you guys are by like Twitter as a platform. I, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna be the same with the other two platforms we have to talk about today. Um, cool, so let's bring our second guest on screen um, and get, we can get started. Wow, so many tools already later to schedule posts for free. HubSpot, you can use it. Okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Talia, how you doing? <laughs> good and you. I'm good. Oh, um, please do a short intro about yourself. Um, I had a business called Nifty 250 where we sold Instagram prints um, for four years until 2017. I was then the creative director at Seattle Coffee, which I'm sure everyone knows. And currently I am a freelance creative director and social media strategist. And I help really small brands and also really large brands. Yeah. Um, I'd say you are one of the most creative people in terms of helping small businesses figure out how best to use different platforms, one of them being Instagram. Um, what would you say like it takes to just get started on Instagram as a small business? I mean, obviously, you just have to kind of sign up and get going. Um, I think it's it's never too late to start and it's always a good time to start. Like, If you have a business and you're really wanting to get eyeballs on it, I think that Instagram is a much easier platform than Twitter in terms of, I don't think that you're going to get burned as fast. I think you can do Twitter incredibly wrong if that's not a platform that you are kind of, that you know about. Whereas Instagram is really a visual platform mainly and it's about sharing beautiful, beautiful images and really like telling a brand story. And I think it's a lot easier to navigate and use because most people do use it in their personal capacity also. Yeah. Um, and, you know, very similar to Twitter, um, Instagram has a lot of parts, right? And like, it's yeah. actually way crazier than Twitter. So there's the feed, yeah. there's stories, there's reels, there's shop. Uh, I know I'm missing something, but like, <laughs> what do you think is like top two um, features that everyone should be using as a small business on Twitter? I think obviously the feed posts and the stories are still the most important. I think that a lot of people today, because there's so much information overload on Instagram, I think that people are either watching um, horizontally or vertically. I think people are either story watchers or feed post scrollers. I think it's very mm -hmm. difficult to do all of it now because there just is such an 
abundance of content. Um, I have noticed a lot of people and brands share their content that they just posted to the feed, to the story saying like tap new post. And to be honest, most of the time I've never seen the post before because of the algorithm, it's very difficult to see a lot of feed posts. So I do think um, continuously posting to your feed and your stories are where you're gonna get the most views. Um, because Instagram, introduced reels as a way to kind of target TikTok and that like younger audience is falling off because of TikTok, you will see a high engagement rate if you post something to a reels rather than it's just a normal Instagram feed post. Yeah. And how do you start to get creative? Like I think that the brands you work with specifically usually have like these beautiful feeds, you know, and it can sort of put a lot of pressure on a you know small business. Uh, a new creator who's like, I don't have like all this amazing content yet. Like, how do you build that out? And how do you also curate it to make sure that it's communicating your business as well? And it's not just like really beautiful, but like no necessary like actual message being driven. Yeah, I think it's difficult. And there are a lot of tools that you can use to do this. And it is kind of a little bit of an art form at this point, getting like that really beautifully curated feed. Um, I often say to people is stop trying to recreate the wheel. I think that everyone wants to do something that's new and original. And often what I say, and I kind of give my clients almost like homework to say, like, go and have a look on Instagram and find brands that you think are doing amazing work. And it doesn't have to be like, if you're selling makeup, it doesn't have to do anything with makeup. It can be beautiful restaurants. It can be hotel groups. It's anyone who you think is amazing, making amazing content. Have a look at that, write it down and like really interrogate why you enjoy this content so much or why this person's content mm. like really speaks to you. And then think about like how you're going to create your content in a similar way that you're actually able to. Whether, like you just mentioned, using Canva, Canva is something I've also discovered. I think it's like $10 a month and it is amazing. Like if you have a little brand and you just have your few fonts and your few brand colors, it's so easy to create something that you could never have created. Like you would have had to pay like a lot for an Adobe Suite where on Canva, it's really, really phenomenal. I think using something like that, using Visco Cam to edit your pictures and kind of always using the same filter so it looks very cohesive in your feed. In terms of stories, I find the app Unfold is really, really amazing for creating really beautiful um, stories. And like they have templates, I think it costs about 15 Rand per set. And it really looks like you took a long time to create something beautiful that you didn't necessarily, like it takes seconds to use something like Unfold. So it's really just about like finding these amazing tools to make social media quick and easy for you because I don't believe that like if your passion is really running a business and talking to people like I don't think that you should be spending hours worrying or feeling guilty that you have them posted to social media I always say like how can we make this as easy as possible um and then lastly um a scheduling some sort of scheduling tool um there's an app called preview that i really really like um if you want to have multiple people within the preview who can see it it costs about 250 rand a month otherwise you can use it for free and with that you can basically create all your content throw it into preview like thing everything around and then you've created basically this beautiful feed and you can keep and like it just makes for me i typically say to my clients like let's spend a couple of hours up front create all the content for the month and then on a day-to-day -day basis, you just have to post. It's not this thing that you have to spend every day saying like, oh, what, what are we gonna post today? Yeah, and um, you know, the, the, the other thing that a lot of small businesses really like struggle with is around whether it's like organic um, posts versus paid posts. And obviously paid yeah. posts are around like spending as much as possible in order to get like as much value as possible. Do you think that's true? Like can small businesses still compete um, on Instagram, is there any way that like you can make it much better in any way? Or is it really like if you have a bigger budget, like you're always going to win on, on, on Instagram? I personally feel and like people might, may hate me for this. But I personally feel giving Facebook and Instagram your money is an absolute waste of time. Like I do not believe in Instagram ads just from the fact that I personally know that I've never bought anything from an Instagram ad. I find them incredibly spammy. I hate seeing them. I just want to go 
like flag them as inappropriate or something like i just want them out my feed i want my feed to look beautiful i think for brands a much much easier way to grow a following and get people talking about you is let's say you had a budget and you were going to spend two thousand rand on instagram ads because you really wanted to grow and you wanted people to look at your page i think a much better thing is take that two thousand rand convert it into product or services whatever you sell and then literally gift it to people who you think create beautiful content or are quite influential. These are not people who have to have 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 followers. It can be someone within your area, someone who already supports you, someone who um, might have already used your business and thought it was amazing and you want them to chat to their 500 friends and family. Um, it doesn't have to be something big. I think that in terms of engagement, you get, firstly, you get beautiful content from it, or if it's not beautiful, at least it's someone talking about your brand. It builds trust, it builds authenticity, and builds engagement, it builds so many things that are, I think personally are so much better than an Instagram ad, which people just scroll through at like as fast as possible. Cool, thank you so much. Um, I really, really appreciate it um that's a, that was a lot actually because i can see already the comments especially around like paying instagram versus twitter um instagram versus yeah. uh facebook as well um so we're gonna catch yeah. up with you in our q a thank you so much i really really appreciate that um i hope you guys are learning a lot because i am like um yeah i have a side hustle that like i thought like i was scared because uh <laughs> you know we didn't want to spend money on instagram yet but now I'm like, ooh, maybe we don't need to do that. Maybe we can create something that's even. Again, remember, we're running a competition. Two, comp two winners for today, 5,000 Rand of support to really grow your social media and your business online, right? So for that, all you need to do is tweet the things that you're learning today and the things that you want to do um, on social media to actually promote your business, the things that you would do if you actually won the prize. Go on Twitter. Tag Yoko underscore ZA or um, so tag Yoko underscore ZA and hashtag Yoko Meets. So tag Yoko underscore ZA and use the hashtag Yoko Meets. So we already have our first winner, but uh, because we don't have like, so when I look down, it's because I'm like looking at this and the whole team is just like telling me everything that needs to happen, right? So um, we have our first winner. All I need you guys to do is please find the drum emoji because someone is about to win 5,000 Rand of like support in order to like run social media on their, um, for their business, right? So I want you guys to, I don't know how to do, okay, let's see. Uh, can you guys do a drum roll for me? Because I wanna announce this winner very quickly and I think it's really, really special moment for a small business. Uh, drum, guys. There's no drum on 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 crack. Oh wow! There we go. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I have like a base. I work with a basic team, guys. So drum roll, please, for the first winner, right? So this is five thousand rand in order to grow your social media as a small business. So the prize, the first prize, because we have a second one, and we're gonna announce the second one at the end. So you need to keep tweeting in order to become a winner as well. So our first winner is. Let's explore with Dumi. So I actually saw this person like posting here. So let's explore with Dumi. Thank you guys so much for the drum roll. That's 5,000 Rand in small business, like in order to grow your small business online on these different platforms. So congratulations to Dumi again. Go on Twitter, share your insights, share the things that you're learning today. And like you could be the second winner, right? So congratulations to Dumi. Hope you guys can do really amazing things for this and like it really enables you a really great way. So again, go on to Twitter, tag at Yoko underscore ZA, hashtag Yoko Meet. You can also use Facebook. We know everyone doesn't have Twitter. So you can use Facebook as well. Again, tag Yoko underscore ZA, hashtag Yoko Meet. Cool. Share your insights, share the things that you're learning, share the resources as well. Cause I saw amazing like interaction guys, like those were amazing. So. Well done to you guys, like really engaging. So we're gonna bring on our last guest um, who is focused uh, mainly on Facebook, but also on Instagram as well. So he works with like a really incredible um, organization that's doing this for small businesses across the country as well. So it'll be really, really great to chat to him. Olane, are you there? Oh, wow, thank you guys so much. Explore to me. 
is getting so much congratulations. <laughs> this is amazing. Hey, Tolani, how are you doing? Oh, man, I, I can't hear you. Are you guys struggling to hear Tolani? Oh, wait, Tolani is muted. Uh, okay. Just unmute me, guys. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> The 2020 uh, slogan, please unmute Yay. me. I am <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> we'll just get started. Like, uh, please give a brief intro about yourself. Uh, okay, so good evening. Hello, everybody. So I am Tolani Waxidive. Uh, my journey basically in digital marketing starts in 2013. After I graduated from UJ, I started my first agency with a business partner. Ran it for six years, worked with a lot of clients, and then because of my passion for small businesses, left all of that to go focus on helping other small businesses to use digital marketing to grow their businesses. Because I know the value, um, because I've seen it um, from the time I left school, all the money that I've earned and had myself and made a living of has been from digital marketing. Whether I was helping a client or I was selling something online. So that's why I'm really passionate about digital marketing, especially for small businesses. Yeah. And again, like I think it's important just to, you know, give context for everyone. Is like, how do you actually get started as a small business on this platform? Right. Like I've asked this question of each of the speakers, mainly because yeah. I know there's a lot of people that still haven't gotten started or they started, but like it hasn't gone exactly the way they wanted to. So like, how does you, how does a small business get started on a platform like Facebook? Um, okay. I'll, I'll go from the very basic all the way up. Right. First of all, the first thing you need is a presence, right? Meaning you're in this digital platform, right? I'll make the parallels of like traditional and digital. So you're in this digital platform and you're looking for customers. That's why you're there as a small business. So you need to be there and these people need to know that you're there and see you, right? The same way how if you had a corner outside selling something, you put up a sign and that's how you get started, right? So the first thing first is that people need to know that you exist before you even sell. Um, before you even do anything, people need to know that you're there and you exist and you're providing some sort of value um, and then you take it from there. Yeah. As, that's as, like as basic, yeah. Yeah, I, I like what you were saying about like get started, introduce yourself, add value before you sell, right? Like before you just like, hey guys, come by. You need to try and add some value. What sort of content would you say like a small business can do like and make in order to start like adding value to the customers before they start saying, hey guys, please come buy this, buy this, buy this. Um, the, the, the kind of value depends really on the type of business and the type of product, right, that, that, that you're into. Um, for example, the, the thing that I'm into is music, right? So when I land on social media, the one thing that I'm going to give you for free and you don't have to ask me is good music, all right? So my business is a creative and talent agency that I run on the side to help artists, right? So if I want people to come to the events and to listen to the music that I share with them, I need to give them something, all right? So for me, the content that I create, because it's music, will definitely have to go with a video. Right now I'm speaking about format as well. Right. Um, but for other people, it could be like you need to write a lot. You need to blog a lot because your kind of audience wants to read stuff. Right. So you could send them like a free PDF um, of your favorite books, um, depending on, on the type of, of, of business and audience you speak to. So the content needs to be personalized and it needs to give value. Yeah. And like yeah. when you start thinking of like personalizing, that goes down to like, um, the business actually knowing you know who their customer is and like this becomes even more important when you start thinking of like um how to make ads on facebook and target them really well so like how does a, a, a small business start to get to know who their customer is where they are and how to actually target them really well on a facebook ad um i'm glad you asked this question because i think th this is the, the biggest lesson I've learned, you know, after training almost a thousand small businesses. And when we have conversations, it's the main thing that a lot of people don't figure out who their customer is before they start their business. A lot of people have a nice idea, then they sort of fumble their way into figuring out who is this nice idea for. And then you're like three years later, only then, you know, you, you're becoming sober about your business. So the best way to do it is 
you need to take a step back. Okay, for example, let's say you haven't started a business, you have an idea now, right? It's perfect for you because now you can really think about, okay, this idea, these sunglasses that I want to sell, which were made famous by John Lennon, who would really, really like these, you know? And where do they hang out? How much money do they have? You know, um, do they already have th this pair? Are they looking for something else? So that's when you figure out your gap in the market, right? And now with all these things that I've said about John Lennon, the types of sunglasses, that's the same information you're going to use on Facebook, right? Let's say you're running an ad. You're going to use the same information to target people, right? To say, okay, I've got 250 Rand Facebook and I'm trying to sell these glasses to almost a thousand people what mm. can you give me with 250 and then facebook will like okay because you're looking for people that like this kind of music dress this kind of way and so on this budget will sh will definitely show this ad to this number of people then it's up to the content and it's up to the person and it's also up to a lot of other factors if they click or not but how you get it right is by doing it in the beginning and really defining who your customer is and being able to explain your customer like like to a friend you know not those big words but like you know like a very 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 simple way that's that's the best way that's amazing um what would you say that a small business needs to do in order to keep their audience engaged right like what does that content actually look like do i need to be focusing on pictures videos writing a lot like what what does that look like um, you know, the, the thing about the internet um, and, and, and content is that everything is about relevance, right? Even your search on Google and other platforms, the more relevant you are, the better, okay? Because mm -hmm. if you're talking about what people want to know now, then you're most likely to reach a lot of people. The same way how Lelo earlier said that know what hashtags are trending. If everyone is talking about hashtag Mofuru Monday, right? Like you are going to be seen if you comment in that conversation. But if everyone is talking about Mokoro Monday and when you want to bring your KFC, like it's not, it's not going to work. So you need to be relevant. So that's why understanding your customer is the most important thing, which is like, I thought about this earlier when I was preparing with that, like, you know how a lot of people confuse the whole targeting of ads and why it works and why it doesn't work, right? So what a lot of people do is because they don't understand their customer, they guess and they leave all the responsibility to Facebook. So they'll put in some money and say 16 to 25 year olds and then boost, right? Where you actually need to describe these 16 to 25 year olds and go as far as what TV shows they like, where they hang out and that kind of stuff. So if you look at it from like a traditional marketing point of view, when you're giving out someone, like if you give the guy in the street corner flyers né, and you tell him to, Give these flyers to every person driving a black car and wearing yellow socks. He's not going to win that guy <laughs> because he's going to see the black cars, <laughs> but he's not going to see the yellow socks. So he doesn't know now, Guti, is this the customer? Should I give them this thing? But if you make it a bit easier and say, every white car driven by a female, please give this flyer because you understand and you have insight that the target market you're trying to reach drive cars and they prefer white cars. So, and that's why it's the whole thing about understanding the audience. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, man. So we're going to bring everyone on screen now. Um, just to do the Q&A part. Again, guys, keep tweeting. Um, I'm just waiting for the team to send me who's going to win. We're going to do this as late as possible. So like, keep sharing the things that you're learning, the tools that you have as well. What I really, really appreciate about your community is like everyone contributing, right? So you guys like shared what you do. But on top of that, you are sharing you know, resources and tools that other people can use. Those are the most important things about your community, is like being able to connect, engage, and contribute to each other's growth, right? So like we don't really do like you just sell yourself, you also have to contribute. You also have to add to the conversation and like engage in a meaningful way. So in order for us to like expand this and like amplify it and make sure more people learn from it. Please keep sharing your lessons, your resources, your tools, all of those things. Go on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Tag at Yoko underscore ZA, and then hashtag Yoko Meets. Cool, guys. So we're going to do q and I've got a bunch of questions here already. Um, Talia? Just missing Talia now. Is Talia still? Uh, I 
think Talia is just uh, struggling. Oh, okay, cool. So Talia is unfortunately struggling for a bit with connection. So we're just gonna keep it moving with some of the questions that we already have, and then just try and like catch up with her right at the end. So um, one of the questions that have come in, and I'm not sure if this is on podcast or Facebook or YouTube, because we try to be as inclusive as possible and get as many people on here as possible. So the question is, how can I maintain my social media strategy if I have a full-time job and no budget to employ someone else to do it? That's a hard one, but uh, but something that every social media, I feel like every small business is struggling with this. So like, what do you guys think? Okay. Okay, we can both answer it. It's okay, it really is okay. <laughs> Um, okay, I literally do this all the time. I have a full-time job and I'm doing so many other things on the side. Um, I think that you just have to make time. Um, is it between your lunch break? Is it like in the morning before, you know, you do your, your actual full-time job and um, all the talks that need to be done? Is it on weekends? Is it actually after 4 or 5 p.m. and you've like knocked off now now you have to like put in like you actually just have to make a little bit of sacrifices where you can and for me i think that it's proven uh, to be really successful in how i've done that and yeah i think that's the moral of it you just have to sacrifice the little bit of time that you have Yeah, in summary, that's that's the thing. It's sacrifice. You need to kill a day that you know that on this day, it's either I'm editing my content or I'm scheduling my content. Then you also need to kill another day where you know that this is when I'm creating content, this is when I'm writing my copy. Then you schedule, then you're done. Because when you have a full-time job, you there's like no space, no room, like, you know? So yeah, use the tools, use these digital tools to automate stuff. Cool. Talia, I think we, we lost you for a bit, but the question was, how do you uh, maintain your social media with no budget and a full-time job? I think, I, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said and just like the tools that I mentioned earlier, like really make things much easier. So really spending that day creating the content and then scheduling it, like so on a day-to-day -day basis, you only have to spend a couple of minutes uploading, save so much time in the long run. Yeah. And you actually, I think there, there was a bunch of people that mentioned like scheduling and like those sorts of tools as well. Do you guys have like specific tools that you use um, that do improve your social media um, output? Um, for me, a tool that I started using this year, which I didn't use before, is um, I just posted it in the chat, is the Creator Studio from Facebook. Um, because most of the work that I do now is mostly on Facebook and Instagram, right? So uh, when I'm on Twitter, it's personal. There's no business that I'm trying to do there. So what Creator Studio does is you can schedule your Instagram posts and your Facebook posts on Creator Studio. You can respond to your DMs that come from Messenger, Facebook, and Instagram in one place. And mm -hmm. You also don't have the Facebook feed, so you won't get distracted. If you're doing work and you're working on your content, you won't get distracted by other people's posts and whatever because you won't see them. So it's like a nice little creator studio to manage your Instagram and Facebook. Free, yeah, also it's free. Alia? Um, I think the ones that I mentioned before, um, Canva, amazing for creating things that like make your feed look really beautiful. Um, I shoot a lot of content on an iPhone. Like I don't think that you necessarily have to have a professional camera. I think people like to see user generated content and that generally looks like it was shot on an iPhone. Um, this good cam to filter, um, it's not expensive. It's much cheaper than, and like easier to use. I personally think than something like Lightroom. Um, then something like Unfold to do stories. And also, I also really like an app called Over where you can bring in your own fonts and you can make really beautiful stories. And you can also use it in this kind of the same way you use Canva as well. And they also have really great free templates. Cool. Lelo, anything for Twitter? Uh, TweetDeck, um, Hootsuite. Uh, I think those are like really important tools and they're free. Um, you don't have to, I mean, they are really like more expensive tools, but I don't think for small businesses, I don't think you want to go down that route of, you know, your sprinkler and stuff like that. But, 
But I think there are cheaper or uh, free alternatives that you can use, um, such as the ones that I've just mentioned. Cool. And then a really interesting one here. Um, how do I get clients from social media without having to run sessions? Um, can you repeat that? Did you get the last part? <laughs> so, how do I run? How do I um, get sales from social media without having to run specials? So, I'm guessing um, specials have become like a really interesting strategy to try and get people to like convert. Um, what do you guys think of using that? But also, like, um, is there a way to do it without having to do that? Ash. I'm there are ways, man. <laughs> oh, no, no, go for it, Tina. No, go for it. I think that if you have a really good product and it's priced well, um, it should be something, and it's something that people want. You should be able to sell it. Like, I very am quite anti sales and like selling, putting on sale all the time because I think it motivates people to wait for your Black Friday sale or the sales that they know are coming and then they're not gonna be kind of consistent um, customers. So I think that if you're selling something and you're offering a good value proposition and you're not overcharging, there shouldn't be a reason to mark down on things. I have noticed in America, I think that they have much bigger margins because they're forever giving influencers and people like 15, 20, 30% off dis discount codes. Um, so they, I think, have a built-in a much bigger margin than personally from brands that I've known in South Africa who can't give you a 30% discount and still be making a lot of money after that. Um, so I think it is sort of interesting also that I think that's something that American brands are doing where they are charging more and then giving away discounts to influencers to give away their clothes so that they'll be talking about it, which I think is a different um, discount strategy, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Um, so actually, just to jump on that, and like, it's a really interesting question as well. Is influencer marketing useful for all businesses or only specific businesses? So do you have to be big in order to do this? Or is it like, okay, at the, even if they're small? So I think I'll start with Lelo, because Lelo is also an influencer, but also plays on the brand side to figure out how they should use influencers and stuff like that. Please give it a go, Lelo. <laughs> I think I think that it really does depend on um, what your business is, but I think I think any type of business can have, you know, influences. And influences doesn't have to mean uh, someone who has like this large amount of followers. Like I think that um, influencer marketing or uh, influences have now like really been defined over time and it really is just about like your community you know like who are you actually speaking to um those are your influences um it can be like word of mouth it can be um people actually saying genuine and nice things about your service or business and recommending that and talking about it on um social media those are your influences so i think any business can actually have it's just like a way to um you just have to find a way to to retain that audience and to have them talk about your product or service. Cool. Well, I'm not sure if people use influencers on Facebook. What do you think? <laughs> um, they actually do, but it's just, I think what people need to understand, which is very like basic, is influencers, is what Lelo said, word of mouth, you know? Um, like when I'm training, I always make sure like we bring in like the traditional and the digital. Like if, if for example, ne, like there's that mama or that guy in the hood or in your suburb or wherever you're from that knows a lot of people, you know, and is into cars. If, if you give him a nice car to drive, he's going to talk about it to people that are into cars and he's going to be very passionate about it, you know? So it just, yeah, it works across the board, but it needs to be very authentic. Um, I think what's been happening a lot is people have been gaming the system and it's going to backfire very soon um, because eventually it doesn't, we're not going to believe you. Like, why are you talking about cars where we know that like you are anti like cars, you know, kind of thing. So yeah, it has to be authentic though, but it can work in any industry. Thank you so much. Talia? I think, I mean, Instagram is a platform of influencers. I think that influencers work for most 
um, businesses that are not taboo and like people want to talk about. Um, I use influencers for pretty much all the brands that I work with. And I break down influencers and content creators into kind of two diverse groups, not that diverse actually. Um, so the one group is someone who might have a lot of like a very big following and create beautiful content but i don't think that uh, they're necessarily that influential and when we talk about influence and being influential in that way i mean like literally directly converting to sales um i think that they might they create beautiful content though and that's another way to get kind of free or quite cheap content created for your brand um because they're posted about it and you can reuse that content for your own feed um but they might not convert to sales fast whereas then there's other group of people who might have fewer followers aren't necessarily amazing content creators in terms of that you don't want to necessarily you reuse their content because it doesn't really look that good but they're a big fan of your business and they continuously post about you and those people are more likely i found to drive sales for you and to get people talking to you coming to your cafe checking out your online store and like bringing you more loyal customers so i think 100 yeah. percent just understanding who's doing what for your business. And then like, if you find someone is like really influential and they love your product and they love your service, um, and you've seen them post about something similar, um, literally reaching them and seeing if there is some way you can make, do something by it, good for them and good for you. Yeah. Thank you so much guys. So last question and like, please try and keep it brief because we are running out of time and we want to announce that second winner. Um, guys, again, thank you so much for the, so much like, engagement and you guys sharing your thoughts and everything um so last question um so to each of you um what is one one piece of advice that you have for a small business getting um started on each platform um what should they be doing and like yeah um how do they get over that fear of being intimidated by the platforms and the features and this and this and that um what's your one piece of advice very briefly guys uh we can start with Polani. Um, simple, very simple, talk to people like they're people and just have a conversation and then that's it. Cool. Lelo? Lelo? Whoopsie. Uh, there I am. Um, I was on mute there for a second. Um, I would say, especially for Twitter, I know a lot of people are afraid of Twitter. Um, just for me, it's like have timing, uh, know what to say at the right time. And yeah, just most importantly, have fun with it. But yeah, just keep just keep in mind <laughs> that what you're saying has an effect on other people as well. And um, but as a business, you shouldn't be going out your way to try and, uh, you know, do the most when, you know, you could just stay in your lane and just, yeah, do what you got to yeah. do. Stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Literally. <laughs> Instagram would really just be to like not overthink it. I think posted and done is better than perfect and not posted. I think get going and as you get going, um, the more confident you'll become in the platform and the more you engage with people and the more you have a better conversation, you'll feel more comfortable using the platform and you'll find your brand voice and your interests and make easier and better and you'll probably enjoy the platform a lot more. So just kind of get going um, and just feel it out. Um, but don't, don't like overthink and then not put because that's not going to help at all. But it really isn't that difficult to do. You really just got to be quite consistent and just like push through, even though it might feel a little bit uncomfortable or weird posting in the beginning. Like it really becomes second nature quite fast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate you guys joining us. I learned a lot and I'm sure that everyone else did as well. Thank you guys so much. Cheers. Eh? Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So guys, like yo, I'm 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 thinking about a lot of things, right? Like for my side hustle, and I'm like reassessing a lot of things, thinking about things that I should be doing. And like I really hope that this has been helpful. I hope that the, you've learned a lot. I hope that the you know the amazing resources that have been here, like I really hope you use those. Can all the speakers please just like share their social media um, and their details in the chat 
so that we can get them um, so you guys can connect with them. Um, we'll just put their social media links. But also, you can go to the Yoko Twitter account. Um, you'll be able to find their details on there. We did like a very small feature, like just saying, you know, this is who we're speaking to today and, and stuff like that. So you can actually catch them there. Again, it was really, really important that you guys like try and amplify the things that we learned here, the amazing tools, the amazing advice, the thinking and the strategy to like really get your business going in social media, but also start growing as well, right? Like that has been the most important thing. Thank you guys so much for the amazing engagement around here as well. Like it's been really incredible. Cool. So last uh, drum roll. I think I still have it copy pasted here. So last drum roll for the second winner. Um, so, oh wait, Woo. what is happening? Okay, second drum roll for the winner, guys. Oh no, I don't know what's going on. Okay guys, please send drum rolls. I can't, I don't know what my laptop is doing, computer. So please send, please do drum roll for the second winner. Um, it's gonna be a really, really interesting one. I think that it's been a really great session, especially because you guys were talking, engaging, connecting. I hope you can find these people as well on other platforms, right? So go on to Twitter, go on to Instagram, go on to Facebook and find, you know, the hashtag Yoko Meet. You'll be able to connect with the entrepreneurs that have been here. So there's two prizes. So I know we said we're going to start with two prizes, but now there's three because someone has been doing something really special and they've been, they've become basically our fourth host right, um, or fourth guest, fourth panel person, right? And this person has been doing so well that they answered most of the questions in Crowdcast. So if you go onto Crowdcast and you go on to ask a question, um, Ian Lind has answered so many of your questions and like he keeps just giving advice, keeps giving, you know, different insights and like resources as well. So Ian Lind, we would really like to send you a package of like Yoko swag because like you are cool. That is the sort of person that we really want part of Yoko meets is like, I want to share as much as possible and help other people grow. Like that is super important. And I think that person is a, cha is a champion for doing this, right? So Ian Lind, we want to send you something. Um, please get in touch or our team is going to try and get in touch. Um, but he's been really, really amazing. Thank you so much, Ian. We really appreciated like all the comments and all the answers that you've been giving. Um, Thank you guys so much for giving him a round of applause. Important. Okay, cool. And then our last prize, which is the 5,000 Rand for a small business to grow their, their, their social media, right? So uh, again, I need to look th through my phone. Again, there's an amazing team of people that are part of this. People that are in the background that are just making this happen. So Sebastian, Yannick, as well as uh, Robin, who is like helping with all the questions. So. This is really great. I just want you guys to say thank you to the team because it's amazing work that they do. So the last winner is, uh, give me a moment, give me a moment. Okay, cool. Ah, where is it? Okay, got it. The last winner, second winner is Simbongile. So Simbongile, thank you so much for the amazing work that you've been doing, amplifying this, sharing it on a different platform, making sure other people know what's happening here. So thank you so much to Ian. Thank you so much to Tumi. Thank you so much to Sim Mongile, but also most especially, thank you to all of you guys for joining us. This has been the biggest Yoko meets we've had. And it's really, really amazing to have you guys like comment and share and really be part of this. Again, amazing team with Robin, Svatle and Yannick, like being part of this, and like in the background, just like making sure that this works. So thank you guys so much. Again, go on to Yoko meet, Go on to any social media, hashtag Yoko Meets. You'll, you'll be able to find everything everyone was sharing, but also we'll share resources that we have. So one resource I just want to like punch to you guys, Yoko has a blog called Open that is a really, really amazing platform that you can use in order to learn a lot about social media. We've got a lot of articles that help small businesses really break it down. But also follow us on Twitter. Like It's really amazing that what we do on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, to deliver like as much learning and insights that you guys can actually use to grow your businesses. So last thing, uh, I don't know what to do for the last thing, but you guys are amazing. Quickly, polls, I feel like I'm okay has become so much bigger now, but yeah. Thank you guys so much, really appreciate it. Um, please send a blue heart to end this. Just to say, really great Yoko meets. This was amazing, connecting with amazing people. We can keep doing this, even though the world has sort of changed. 
So guys, Blue Hearts, just to end things off, I hope my computer works to do this. Oh no, it's not working. <laughs> ah. Oh guys, the Yoko blog is called Open by Yoko. Just Google Open by Yoko. Ah. Thank you guys for the blue hearts and thank you guys so much for joining us. Catch you guys next time. Don't forget, Yoko meets.